Hi guys and welcome to today's video tutorial. Today we'll be teaching you how you can create Harry Potter 1 spell effects in HitFilm 4 Express. So today's tutorial is going to be more difficult uh, when compared to some of my other videos. So I'm going to start this new difficulty rating uh, to make sure you guys know just how difficult these tutorials are. And this one's going to be a 4 out of 5. So the first thing you need to do is to get the clip where you actually uh, fire your wand sort of thing. So here I've just got my wand coming up as though I just cast a spell um, and then it goes back out again. So what you're going to have to do is make a composite shot out of that real quick. So today we're going to be needing two things. First of all you're going to need some sort of fire effect like this. This is just a ground fire. I'm not quite too sure what pack I got this from uh, but it's really nice. It's a 4k 60p uh, transparent uh, fire which looks really really nice and I'm going to use it for today's effect. Another asset I've got is from Detonation Films, and it's just this fireball um, which shoots out like that, and we're going to use both of these effects today. But before we add any of these effects into our composite shot, we need to track the movement of the wand, because that's what these effects are going to be uh, stuck onto. So I'm going to use the full stop and the comma keys in my composite shot. Actually, I'm just going to switch back to the uh, compositing workspace real quick. I'm just going to do it until we, we are able to see the, uh, the wand in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to create a point layer. Now you can motion track this using the 2D motion tracker, uh, but it's pretty hard to track since it's so small, it's not very contrasty, and moves around a ton, so we're just going to do it manually. All we have to do is go into our transform, we're going to keyframe the position, and we're going to make it move around uh, with the wand as it moves around. Right, so I've tracked the majority of this, um, and you don't really need to track that much because it's going to be quite a quick single burst that we're going to do. So I'm just going to go back to the frame where I want the actual effect to start, so it's this frame right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the editing workspace so that I can import my assets. Um, the reason I'm just going back into the editing workspace is because you've got the trimmer here, um, and it's already been trimmed for us. So I'm just going to import it in right like so. Um, and it's now in time, so it appears right here. I'm just going to rename this layer the wand, so we know what it is. And I'm just going to now adjust the position of this. I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to adjust the angle points so that if we need to change the rotation and stuff later, it'll rotate around the very edge like so. And we're just going to position it and scale it into place. So I'm going to position it like so. What I can do now is I can set the ground fire layer to be the child of the wand layer. So now wherever the wand point moves, uh, then this ground fire layer moves as well. Now I'm going to add in my second asset, uh, which is going to be that, that fireball against black. So I'm just going to play it back. I'm going to set my in point to be the frame where it shoots out like so. And I'm going to have it end at the very end. I'm just going to drop that in the timeline as well. I'm going to move that above the actual fireball. Um, and what I can do, I'm just going to move this here. And I'm going to, again, position this so that it's in the right place. Also, because this has a black background, I'm going to set the layer in the layer properties. I'm going to set the blender mode to be screen or add so that uh, it gets rid of the white background. Now, also, this fireball layer is actually quite slow, so I'm just going to uh, go right click and I'm going to set its speed duration. I'm going to set its speed to be 400% so that it moves along much faster. And again, I'm going to parent it uh, to this one layer so that it moves around. Now the last asset is actually not going to be an asset that we're going to import from somewhere else. We can create it inside of HitFilm. So I create a new uh, black plane layer and I'm going to name this Flare because that's what we're creating. We're going to be creating a lens flare. So search up for your light flares effect and drag it onto that plane and once you've done that you can mess around with all the different flares so I'm just going to go with 35mm prime and what you're going to go and have to do is go into your hotspot position select the center to be 0, 0 and then parent it to the wand layer so now wherever the wand layer is the flare will move around with the center of that wand as well and it will look really nice I'm going to set uh, the blend mode to be something like add or screen I'm going to then shorten it so that it only starts where everything else starts, like so. And I'm going to mess around with these until I find the right intensity and scale. 
Um, but now we're going to go and do some compositing tweaks because this doesn't quite look uh, so great. So I'm going to start off with the fireball layer because I don't think there's actually all that much compositing that needs to be done. All we have to do is select this layer. I'm just going to position it a bit better maybe and search up for your blur effect because this has an edge right here um, and we want to get rid of that by blurring it out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to blur it up a bit. Make sure you untick clamp to edge and that way it'll become this nice uh, sort of like a fireball but it'll also look sort of smoky as well uh, which is sort of the effect we're going for anyway like so um, and now you can't see the edge either so it looks pretty good the next thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to do the flare so what I'm actually going to do here with the, with the flares I'm going to animate it so that at the very beginning it's going to be a really bright flare and then it's going to sort of fade away as the effect sort of dies down so keep in mind that I've actually shot this at 60 frames per second. So if you have a 30 frames per second composite or something like that, you might, if I do something for two frames, say, uh, you might only want to do it for one frame. So pretty much what I want to happen is on this frame and on this frame, I want it to be really bright. And then on this frame, I want it to be less bright. So I'm going to keyframe this frame at the very beginning. I'm just going to make it a little bit less bright, uh, a little bit smaller, perhaps. And then on this frame, I'm going to make it really intense and really big as well. Uh, maybe not quite so big and not quite so intense, but uh, you can mess around with this. And now what we've got is two frames where it's super bright and then it gets less bright. And we're going to keyframe this to be less bright as time moves on as well. So that's pretty much done with the light flare. Now for the bulk of this effect, which is the ground file, um, and we're going to apply a bunch of effects on here to make it look more realistic. So the first thing we're going to do, if I just hide both of these layers actually, is we're going to apply, let's see, we're going to apply a brightness and contrast effect. Just drag that on. We're also going to apply a hue, saturation and lightness effect. I'm just going to drag that on before the brightness and contrast. And we're also going to drag on a glow to make it a little glow. Now the reason for this is that this effect uh, has been shot rather flat and uh, rather underexposed uh, so that we can retain all details so that it's useful when we're compositing. But that's not realistic because if we were exposed for this then everything else would be completely dark. So now that we're exposed for everything else this needs to be super bright um, like a real fire would be. The very first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to change the hue a bit and the reason for this is it's quite a yellow fire at the moment and I want it to be sort of more orangey red uh, to get a really cool look with it. Now the second effect is of course the brightness and contrast so I'm just going to set the brightness to be all the way up at 100 and for the glow I'm just going to mess around with these uh, to create a really cool glow. Now I'm also going to set the saturation here to be quite high so that it's a really glowy um, bright orange fire. I'm going to make the radius of this quite big, but not so big that we see uh, the edge right here. So I'm just going to go back in here, and I'm going to make the radius a little bit smaller until we can't really see the edge. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I might just uh, duplicate this brightness and contrast actually. I'll just get rid of the glow, um, and I might just make it a little bit brighter and then a little bit more glowy. And that looks pretty good. It's nice to have the brightness and contrast effect after the glow as well. So when we look at the composite as it is now, it looks pretty good, uh, but it's too bright for too long. Uh, and we want this to be quite a short, sharp burst of, of fire. So what I'm going to do is, for these two frames it's really bright, uh, as we can see here. And I'm just going to start it with the flare. So we're in 60 frames per second, so after these two frames, maybe just a couple of frames here, I'm just going to set everything to be zero. And if we hide these fire layers, we can see that it becomes that it's really bright and it's just this really short, sharp burst. Now we're going to move over onto our uh, ground fire, and this is where we're going to animate all of these effects that we just applied. So if we just zoom in here, we can see at this frame, this is the frame where these frames are really bright, and this is the frame where the flare gets darker. So we're going to keyframe all of these properties uh, accordingly. So we don't have to really keyframe anything in this hue, saturation, and lightness effect. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to keyframe the brightness. 
So I'm just going to keyframe the brightness there, keyframe the brightness there, and also keyframe the intensity of the glow. Um, and then that's all going to be pretty bright. Next frame in, we're going to make it not quite so bright. We're just going to jump to the frame where this is at zero. So at this frame, we're just going to make everything darker. So we're just going to make this zero. We're going to not have any glow. I'm just going to make this zero as well. Um, and this is actually quite, quite saturated here. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to keyframe the saturation so that it's uh, zero here. And here, it's at 100. So I'm in the compositing workspace now uh, because it's nice and easy. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to make the fire go away after a certain period of time. So we're just going to create a new mask for this layer. So we're just going to close up all of these effects right here. And we're just going to go into our rectangular mask tool. So somewhere around this frame, I'm just going to create a rectangular mask. And in the properties of this mask, I'm just going to do some quick animation. So here's where it's really bright. And probably about here. Let me think. Okay, about here, I wanted to start moving away. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, at the frame before this, I'm going to keyframe the position. And then here, I'm going to move the mask left uh, until it just about covers the fire. And then I want to get a, rid of it in about four frames, say. So at this frame, I'm just going to move the mask all the way over here. And just for good measure, because we are maybe feathering it and stuff later on, the frame after that, I'm just going to move it all the way over here so that it's not really visible at all. So as we can see here, uh, if we go back into our scale to fit, uh, we can see that the fire goes away like so. Um, but well, it's quite, uh, again, quite a harsh edge. Uh, so we're just going to feather that. We're going to go into our mask properties here. Under our shape, we're just going to feather that. Um, so that it's nice and smooth uh, the way it goes away. And that's why we created this little gap here, so that when we feathered it, um, it didn't feather the whole time, but only here it started to feather. Um, I think that the fireball is maybe a bit too blurry and too smoky. So what I think I'm going to do is I actually might just scale it up uh, and lower its opacity real quick. And I'm just going to give that another RAM preview, and uh, we'll have a look at how this plays back. So in my opinion, that's pretty good. Um, and now all that's left is your sound effects. So here I've got the Warren SFX sound effect pack, uh, which has got a bunch of different uh, Harry Potter sort of sound effects in here. So we're just going to the sortilages, or however you pronounce that. Um, then you've got a cool, whole bunch of uh, sound effects. So I'm just going to play around with these effects until I find a really nice one. So one tip when you're editing audio is actually do this in the editor because you can see the waveform uh, of the audio. So I'm just going to drag it in and we can see uh, the actual spike where the actual thing should go. Wow, that was good timing. Um, so we're just going to play this back. It's a bit laggy, but uh, it'll do. And as a final addition, after you've done all of your visual and your sound effects, we're just going to add a grade after we've done all of our effects. And that way, it'll blend everything together really nicely and make it all feel as though it's in the same world. So that's it, guys. I've added my sound effect and I've added my final grade, uh, which hopefully ties in all of these effects together. Um, and that's pretty much your final effect. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. I wish you good luck on your next Harry Potter spell effect. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.